Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adebwe, the General of of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Sunday, the 14th day of April 2024, and our topic for today is In One Accord. Let us pray. Our dear Father, we thank you for the privilege of life. Thank you for how you have been our guide, our keeper, our protector. Thank you because you have always been there for us. Thank you for not letting the wishes of the enemy to come to pass. Thank you because you have been faithful and just. Thank you for being loving and kind. Today we come before you again, Lord, ready to receive of your word. We ask that you speak to us. We are asking that your word today would come and bless us. Let it teach us and transform us. Let us never remain the same again for good. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Psalm 113 verse 1. Psalm 113 verse 1 reads, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 113 verse 1. Our text for today is from the same book of Psalm 113. We'll be reading from verse 1 down to verse 3 now. Psalm 113 from verse 1 to 3 reads, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Psalm 113 from verse 1 to 3. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more is in one accord. And the body of our devotional for today, our Father and the Lord says to us that God loves unity. Wherever he finds people uniting in his name, he will show up. You can see a good example of this in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. It reads, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. In the above passage, as the trumpeters, singers, and musicians all sang as one, God's presence came down like a cloud and filled the temple. God loves it when his children worship him in one accord. This is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20, Where two or three people are gathered in my name, there will I be. At the upper room in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that when the apostles were in one accord, the Holy Spirit filled the room with a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Wherever believers are gathered in unity, God will show up in His glory. Today's Bible reading tells us that when brethren come together in unity, it is like the anointing oil that was poured on Aaron's head, which went all the way down to his feet. Do you know what that means? It means that it is only when God's people are united that the anointing can flow amongst them. Without unity, the corporate anointing will not flow. The reason many churches are not experiencing the power of God amongst them is that they are not united. Where there is gossip, strife and backbiting, don't expect the power of God to flow. These vices are not of God and so God cannot be where they exist. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 says that we are all different parts of one body. If the head is envious of the eyes and the leg is keeping malice with the head, how can the body function effectively? When we become united in our local assembly 
and in the body of Christ as a whole, we will see great miracles amongst us that will amaze the whole world. If you are a pastor reading this now, you should ensure that all forms of strife amongst workers and all members of your local assembly are resolved today. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our topic for today once more is in one accord. I would like to start off with this example. Have you ever tried lifting a bottle of water with just one finger? You know how difficult that will be. Even our fingers need to work in unity and in one accord to make anything possible. In Genesis chapter 11, scripture tells us about the unity of those who came together to build the Tower of Babel. They wanted to build a tower that would reach to heaven. Scripture tells us in verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now, he says, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Hallelujah. This emphasizes to us today the importance and the power of unity and oneness. The principle of the kingdom is such that one will chase a thousand, but two will put ten thousand to flight. How many then do you think three and four and five will chase? Unity and agreement and being in one accord is another great system of receiving just about anything that we want. Our Lord Jesus Christ speaking in Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 says to us, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. This is such a powerful statement. He said, if we will agree as touching anything, and anything is anything. This means that when we are in agreement and in unity, there is absolutely nothing we cannot achieve. The enemy knows this and that is why he always attacks the unity of believers. He knows the power that is available when we unite. Hence, he strives to ensure that we never do so. Scripture tells us in Mark chapter 3, verse 24 and 25, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, it says that kingdom cannot stand. Verse 25 tells us, And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. In the example I gave us earlier, the fingers have to unite to take on a task together so they can achieve it. It is quite sad and painful to see that in our churches today, we have so many gossips flying around. We have so many people backbiting. We have so much of envy and strife. And all of these are planted by the enemy so that he can have his own way. If you are a football lover, you would agree with me that a team has to be united for them to go very far. You cannot see a team that is divided against itself going far in any kind of championship. They will have to support themselves, strategizing together, giving themselves supports and assists here and there so that their ultimate goal can be achieved. In today's study, our Father and the Lord also tells us that it is where there is unity that we can find the anointing flowing. Praise God. The anointing is necessary for there to be healing. The anointing is necessary for miracles to take place. The anointing is necessary for yokes to be broken. And we know very well that in the presence of strife, envy, and other forms of vices, the anointing cannot be found. The anointing will not flow. What it means is that the enemy will have full chance and full opportunity to inflict the people with whatever he desires. He will have full access to torment them as he likes because they are not in one accord. I will also like to emphasize the example our Father and the Lord shows to us in today's study where he tells us that we are all members of one body. When we see ourselves this way, we will be able to appreciate ourselves and to work together in unity. We know that the head, for example, cannot be where it wants to be without the help of the legs. The body cannot be refreshed without the hands taking food to the mouth. Therefore, if we are members of one body, why then should we continue in the division that we find amongst ourselves? 
when the members of a body for example continue to operate in disunity, it will not be long before it begins to look sick, malnourished and in need of help. I'd like us at this point to bow our heads and ask the Lord today would say, Father, please fill my heart today with love for my brother, my sister and everyone around me in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, help me to see them as members of the same body. Help me to be open and accessible to render my service as a part of this body. Ask the Lord today to brood over his church that the spirit of envy, of strife, and all forms of evil vices will check out now in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, as envy and strife and all of its brothers are living our lives, let them be replaced with your anointing. Let your anointing begin to flow again. Let whatever situation and circumstances in our lives need this anointing begin to receive divine intervention in the name of Jesus. Let yokes be broken. Let stagnation be lifted. Let all forms of evil manipulations come to an end in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today to fill our minds and our hearts with the understanding of our need for ourselves. That every spirit of self-sufficiency will be uprooted from its roots today in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, let great miracles, signs and wonders begin to be wrought in our midst. Let the flow of your mighty power be seen again. As we continue to unite as one body, let there be no limitation as to what we can achieve that we have imagined in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Let us continue to move from glory to glory and from grace to even greater grace in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today for the grace to genuinely love everyone around us. The grace to love everyone whom Christ died for in the name of Jesus. Begin to appreciate the Lord and bring your prayers to a close. Lord, we thank you. Receive our thanks. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our glorious King, we thank you for your word to us today. Thank you for reminding us of the need to be in one accord. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bind the body of Christ in Nigeria and in the world at large together with your love. And let us give no room for the enemy. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have an action point in today's study that tells us, call a member of your local assembly and say, I love you with the love of Christ. We receive the grace to do so today, to let the love of Christ be shared abroad through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 16 down to chapter 18. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 30 of our Open Heavens devotional. We'll be singing When We Walk With The Lord. Have a remarkably blessed Sunday ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. We love you and bye for now. When we walk with the Lord In the light of His word For the glory He shines on us Any
fellowship sweet. We will sit at his feet, or we walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, never feel only trust and obey. Trust and obey, when there's no I believe today's devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.